Psychotechnologies Live. Welcome to a very interesting, uh, kind of unique episode of Psychotechnologies Live. Um, we're going to try something a bit different this week. So, um, as you might know from the title, masculine archetypes. Um, I've come up with a new system, a new way of seeing uh, masculinity um, in terms of warriorness. Um, that's, I think, very appropriate for a modern day society. We're going to give it a go. If we like it, then we might turn it into video. Um, and if not, then this will be a milestone along the way. Got to say right now, my vagus nerve is very activated. I feel my body, my chest, my torso. Very, very excited, very into this, but in very like powerful from my core way, not in a normally like my excited manic-ish way. Do okay. you want to like, do you have like a set the scene about what we mean by like warrior, masculine, those things, and then like break it down or where are we going? Down? Yeah, I guess. Okay. I guess. So the way I see it is that the warrior is the person that fights. So there is always, there is always a need for fighting. Um, there is always a need to defend, defend, they say defend the weak, but I think I'd like to shift that frame to defend the vulnerable. Mm. Uh, so there are lots of people that are very vulnerable, but are not weak. Um, if you think about it, like support personnel for the army, they're not weak. They're, they're doing very strong things. Right. They, they play the power. role. Like they may cook the food, but they like make sure everyone else is fed. They're a very right. An army uh, army marches on its stomach. Right. And so <laughs> the cook is, is very, is a very powerful uh, member of the military, but they're very vulnerable. Right. So, and then the civilian population. So that's like me, right? So I'm not, I don't have any military experience. I'm just a regular civvy right. and I need protecting from military pe type people. And so I don't consider myself weak, but I do consider myself very vulnerable, ex especially when it comes to. Military. I would consider you maybe like untrained, like you haven't gone through the boot camp army thing. You're not a soldier, like, but you're also not supposed to be in this moment of your life, right? Yeah, but, you don't need to. You don't need to make me feel better. I'm, I'm okay. Right. Everybody's <laughs> vulnerable in different ways, right. and if you've ever, uh, if you've actually ever met soldiers, um, they're very vulnerable. In uh, they tend to be very vulnerable in uh, more emotional type ways mm. uh, than physical type ways, right? Uh, a lot of a lot of PTSD kind of untreated um, in that, and that's. You know, like I do have friends, ha had friends, have friends that have that have been into like military, special forces, things like that. And they do. Uh, it's hard. It's hard. Like being a soldier is hard, mentally hard, whether or not you've even seen com even if you haven't seen combat, it's still it's still hard on you. OK, I, I kind of want to name the like, what do we mean by archetype very quickly? Right. So what like so what is an archetype? So. The way I've been seeing it is that everybody has like a different idea of what it means to be strong or what it means to be a warrior or what it means to fight. And um, they often clash with each other. Mm. Um, so there's this YouTube channel I watch sometimes where like uh, this guy makes fun of the different branches of the military. And so he's always making fun of like, like the Marines versus let's say uh, the Air Force. So the Marines are like portrayed as these uh, like almost subhuman uh do not do not care about pain or discomfort they're just they're just out like they're just like whatever sleep in the mud like half drowning eat dirt like i don't care like whatever mm -hmm. that's you know thanks for letting me eat something <laughs> like like oh i like this kind of dirt anyway <laughs> um and then they have the air force as like um as like what the the ac is not working like oh my god i am filing <laughs> well the, the air force are like they're up in the air they're doing something like technically complicated well most of the air oh, force okay. is not in the air oh. uh, well there's like very few very few pilots very few people that are part of the air force are actually pilots right so it's mostly it's mostly uh support personnel mm, right um, I see. when i was in israel like 15 years ago the the army guy said it was 50 to 1 for support right. personnel to air to to, to pilots yeah. but it's probably like even bigger than that now um we're talking like engineers mechanics 
like yeah every- yeah air, air traffic controllers um cooks <laughs> uh maintenance like uh maintenance right like every time the airplane go we'll get to we'll get to this we'll get to this later but the idea is that like there are different ways of fighting there are different strengths in the world and um i want to i want to acknowledge the different ways that people contribute to the war effort and the war effort that i'm thinking of specifically now is is the war against moloch so Mm -hmm. okay because we're in modern times we're in the we're in the meta- we're in the, modern, we're, in the we're transitioning to a meta modern world. Um, I'm not going to comment on the timeline of that tra- tra- transition, but there is a transition happening into this new world that we're going to be uh, living into. And there's, I think, the idea for me is that eventually humanity will be united in in fighting Moloch, which is essentially like the representation of bad coordination. <laughs> I would say. It's like very nuanced and there's a lot of stuff goes into it and different takes on it. Um, but this is this but basically is basically it's hard to work together. Yeah. It's so not even a fault. Together, it's just really hard to work together. Death and misery. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's really hard. And and currently I think, yeah, currently the obstacle does seem to be coordination, is that what I would say? Right. Um, so I want to kind of I want to bring out these archetypes as a way of of coordinating without coordinating so like the marine and the air traffic controller don't need to coordinate but they do need to be able to have respect for each other right and so they need to be able to go to the bar or go to the um live their life be neighbors whatever and they need to respect each other as warriors but they don't actually like need to to like exchange uh battle information right this is done Mm -hmm. by other people Right. They just need yes. to do their bit and do their bit really well and then trust the others doing their bit as well. Trust that the other ones are doing their bit as well. Um, and a non-naive trust, which is which we'll get to later. Mm. Um, and so for me, it's for me, like the idea behind these archetypes are to bring out that that, you know, in in the great battle, we all play the different. Uh, there are going to be different people playing different roles, but. I want to bring it down into more grounded everyday life where we actually ourselves play different roles. Mm. And so, um, and you, the listener play different roles in your life. And so you might be, you might be stuck in a role that you don't want to be in, or you might be looking for a specific role or, you know, the very, or you might play different roles in different points, but these are to, to kind of bring out the different roles that people can play and to, uh, that you play that you play and that you've seen and that you that you see in your life and that you see around mm. and to try to give respect to the other worlds that you're not currently inhabiting right so so i want to go for like types for a moment. and the ones that you are if you feel bad about yourself so so types right and, and my favorite line about types is there are different types of people and that's like that's what types are but then yeah, we're like not we're, that. we're yeah. talking about archetypes right so there are yeah. these overarching sort of more powerful definitions of like how do you describe this overarching type thing like i guess we call yeah. them archetypes that's what they are yeah, yeah. and then overarching that, like, like like maybe in, in a different paradigm like the angel is an archetype of uh sort of defining the the uh person from heaven right they have wings they they grant blessings that's like an archetype yeah yeah so often angels yeah like yeah so there are various archetype systems so like like what you're bringing up is like you have angels and like from the like from the bible so we have like raphael um who, or raphael who's the like the archetype of healing so he comes mm-hmm. down and there's there's different characters in the bible that are like sort of unnamed characters or like very side or they only appear a little bit and in in the jewish tradition like we'll say like some of those are are the angel of of uh, refua the angel of healing so it's like the same angel that went to go heal abraham went to go um heal uh his wife and then there was like it's like so he's like does different things and then i think michael is uh a little more destructive Mm. and so you know, like in the olden days, they would imagine them as actual like beings of of uh, supernatural the beings, beings who take out, who carry out the will of God, right? That's the yeah, that's the archetype of the angel. 
yeah and nowadays we might have evolved that to more into um i mean i consider that 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 the same right like there are there are these like what is an archetype it's like a real thing that kind of exists but it's there's not physical like it's very metaphysical in nature well and well so i think also on the personal level i can sometimes you know if if i go visit the homeless shelter and i go help out those people i can suddenly like start to feel like i'm doing the angelic action like i'm taking actions that almost feel yeah. like channeled direct from that archetype i am like yeah. enacting personally what it's like to or what it would feel like if i were an angel i know i'm just like some guy going yeah these these people who are having a worse time than me but i get like the vibe of like i am feeling angelic yeah and like, so don't tell I, them who i am on the inside but i'm like momentarily i'm the guy giving them food i'm like the magical god-given like right savior you thing i wind up in these situations where i look at you and are you an angel and like right. you, you're like i don't know <laughs> I might i'm be. like no, i'm just some guy who like wanted to give you some food yo but don't tell them that yeah. it helps them if they're like whoa and angels come to help me that's like very enriching empowering you know a god-given message of support so i'm like right so there's I'm a lot of stuff today. going it gets very complicated very quickly i think right um um but yeah like like we do but i i think like the the, the groundingness that i want to stick with is like we do feel these grooves in mm. reality sometimes that we move through right and so i want to like kind of bring out the grooves and like label them and mm. and name them and that way we can see them and talk about them right um you know however it is because yeah um do you want to so so like we're going for warrior archetypes right right so these are like masculine warrior archetypes um and like that doesn't mean that that women can't do this or don't do this it's, oh there would be other ones there would be feminine it's, ones it's just like, like yeah this is just warriors as well and very masculine right. i wanted to name that yeah we just want to like this is the masculine stuff we'll deal with it we'll yeah. have another episode on those things yeah uh yeah maybe i'm not really good with the female archetypes but yeah what we can we can, well, we can figure that out I also think I don't really women, understand women so well. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say that, like, in the in the sense that the masculine loves the like strict structural definition of like this is how the masculine is, the feminine hates that. So if we come yeah. along, yeah, right, the masculine yeah. approach, try and define what the feminine is, that's like not gonna land very well. Yeah. So, so there's like that yeah. episode is gonna look very different to this one because it's not gonna be like this is exactly how it is. It's gonna have more flowing, more undefinable, more chaos. But this is masculine, right? <laughs> to say how it is. I am yeah. here to say how it is. Daniel is here to say how it is. I'm I'm here to put forward a view. I think there's a lot of lot of right. different ways of breaking it down. And then I'm going to and I want to like break it. I want to break it down from like this army mindset. Great. Great. Okay. So what do we but got? like this personal army mindset? Okay. So drum roll. I, I don't okay, know. Okay, I want to start with like the basics. Yeah. The so basics. Like the basic, like the way to start is like, what is a warrior? And like, especially modern day, it's like the guy, the foot soldier, the, the infantry. Mm. So it's the guy with the gun who shoots the enemy man on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> he's got boots. Probably is he could be a woman, but usually they're usually men and he's got a gun. Well, it's a woman. And they're channeling that masculine is. thing. What? You know, even if it is, the the soldier themselves are a woman they're channeling their masculine energy anyway of like this is how i have boots on the ground and this is how i hold the gun and this is how i go forward and do i carry out my command yeah, it was just a comment to include women i didn't yeah <laughs> we already did this <laughs> masculine archetypes this is what it is that doesn't mean women can't embody this obviously um just like men can body uh, fem feminine etc uh, we're giving lip service to both these people so everybody feels included um and we're gonna go we're gonna, we're just gonna we're gonna go it's with a this. foot soldier yeah it's so foot soldier so this is like the basic right like this is the guy he has a gun and he shoots people <laughs> or, or he has a gun and he runs and shoots people those are the you know those are the two versions he's either on attack or defense shooting right. people that are coming to him or he's going to people to shoot them right okay um this is like this is like the basic like this is the starter point for 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 a warrior right so and i don't mean like pick up a gun and shoot people i mean in a metaphysical sense this is the the, the type you have to like be able to fight for what you want is this and, like the clay that we can mold into the various different 
types of warrior. This is the like the basic. No, no, no. This is the no, no, no. This is the starting. This is the starting. This is the most basic warrior. Okay. So this is like the starting position that everyone starts in. Um, you might be able to like shift shift views or whatever. Like there, there's different directions to go, but just the basic level is you're like this is important and I need to go and deal with that. And that's where that's where the warrior comes from. There is a dangerous situation and I need to go deal with that. And I'm going to, I'm going to use courage. So I heard this, this good line from Andrew Bustamante, who's like the CIA, ex CIA. He does, does awesome YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. Um, And he says, there's a difference between courage and confidence. So confidence is when you know it's going to work out and courage is when you hope it's going to work out. Mm. So, I mean, he says it better, but this is like the, this is like the basics of it is that, is that you don't, you don't know, like the soldiers, the soldier in Ukraine, you know, like their uh, soldier World War II, the allies, let's say, um, like they don't know that it's going to work out, but they have, they go do it anyway. Right. Uh, and, you know, like that's in like the army and you get like parenting. Like I get this all the time with parenting, right? Like I've never been a parent before. I had my kids and everything is new and I have to go out and, do that and i don't know that it's going to work out but i have to go do it anyway right if i don't do it it's for sure not going to work out right we've got this like forward charge thing going on yeah so i'm going and i'm dealing with it and sometimes it's sometimes it's forward sometimes it's back right like sometimes i'm reacting to something that happened and i'm like needing to like back off get some space and deal with it and sometimes i'm like i'm i'm seeing if i'm seeing something i'm like we have to go do this even though it's hard and it's scary and might not work out well but we're gonna. But I'm gonna be there, and I'm gonna keep going. And that's 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 the first sense of courage. Right. That's the first thing that it comes from is is you're entering the unknown, and you're doing it for 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 something valuable, something important. Mm. So like, you know, it could be your family, it could be your comrades, right? They say the the soldier fights for their comrades. They don't fight for ideals. Um, but it could you could go and fight for your country, or you could fight for your ideals, or you could fight for, um, you know, love or you know, peace, whatever it is. And that's important. It's important that you have this thing, and then you go and deal with it. And so that's just like the basic level. So you're just going straight up into battle. Then, then I want to contrast this. So then there's this, but then there's the shadow side of this. So you have soldiers. Like there's a soldier that, you know, like in Ukraine now, the war, they have these trenches, right? So there's these trenches and you see the trenches. So, you know, the soldiers are in the trenches, you know, like they're, you're the soldier, you're in the trench. Like the bad guy, the, 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 the Russians know you're there. So they know where the trenches are. They know where you are. They don't know exactly, but they know generally where they, where you are. And they know that if they go advance to this trench, that you're going to be there and you're going to fight them. Mm. The shadow side is you have like scouts or rangers or snipers, people like that. Hunt, you know, maybe in uh, olden days, it would be more of like a hunter type archetype or an assassin where you don't know they're there. So, um, you know, I've, I've watched all these videos on, on like ranger school and they, you know, that sniper school. So snipe, like the hard part about sniping is not pulling the trigger, right? Cause they have, everything's like auto calculated now and it's just a bunch of math. So, Anyone can like put the X on the line and do the math. The hard part is not getting caught. Huh? Not getting caught. Not getting caught. Exactly. So you need to go, you need to get into like this dangerous position where there's tons of people that are trying to kill you. And you need to like, you need to like get the, you know, get everything set up and on that. And then, you know, take the shot or get the information. A lot of days they use it's inf- a lot of information kind of war. So, um, because you can send in the drones or the artillery or aircraft. But the the idea is that that you're there, you're a soldier, you're fighting for, for what's there, but you're not declaring yourself. You're not telling people that you're you're fighting. You're you're doing it in secret. Mm. And so there there is a there is a way in which it's it's like oh huh? yeah, go there ahead. Is, yeah. And so this is what I mean by shadows. It's the people that fight in the shadows. And so you don't know they're there. They can't tell anybody, right? So even like spies behind enemy lines to a certain extent, they're uh, they're pretending like they might be on our side and they're fighting for us, but they can't tell anyone. 
they can't tell anyone that they're doing the right thing. They can't declare it. They can't use their presence as a deterrent um, for the bad things. Right. And so they're really harnessing the shadow. They're like, but they're living. Yeah. They, they, they're still warriors, but they're warriors of the shadow. They're not warriors of the light. Um, And I want to like really emphasize that doesn't mean that they're evil by shadow. I don't mean evil. I mean, like literally like shadows, (laughs) The shadows of the world are the dark parts that you can't see well. Well, I mean, since we're on archetypes, like shadow and the reason why we think like we're afraid of the dark when we're little is because there is there is some there are evil things out there runs between evil and runs between shadows and runs between dark. There is some connection there from the the vaster archetypes. Like, yeah, but we're talking about warriors who are making taking advantage of it. Yeah. And, and this is this is something that's really important for us to understand as a society is that there are, you know, all the evil things, I guess, live in the shadows generally. Mm. There's, there's a lot of scary evil things in the shadows, but there's also a lot of good people that live in the shadows. Mm. And there's a lot of people that are good, that are, that are help, you know, like part of the mission that are, you know, working towards the, the good uh, of our society that are just not, or even just people that are just not acknowledged. Um, and some of that is, is like, you know, so I'm trying to like bring it out and acknowledge them because I think there are a lot of people that do need to acknowledge, be acknowledged. Mm. Um, I had this idea a while ago for like an EA channel, effective altruism channel, where you just take people that do boring, super technical, boring jobs. Um, but they happen, but the, the way they do their jobs, they like actually like save a lot of either lives or like prevent a lot of human misery through like spreadsheets or something Mm. um and just like bring them out and talk to them because there are there are a lot of these heroes that exist in our world that are just not acknowledged for various reasons yeah there's um there's a saying that uh a bright light casts a long shadow which is that if you want to be a strong human or you want to be a good leader you're going to end up having your own shadows you're gonna end up creating a lot of shadows yeah right but also casting that shadow onto other people and there's a there's a big conversation in like leadership stuff of how do i be a brighter light and be aware of and working with the the shadows that i'm casting yeah Yeah. very powerful stuff yeah so this is important as yeah this is important as well um and so it's it's so the so so uh just to like go back so to go back so we got the we got the the warrior of light and we got the warrior of dark the warrior of shadows and again these are not to be derogatory terms these are to be to to to, to call a spade a spade these are to to say what reality is and to bring them both into integration and so when you have this when you have this warrior of the light and you have the warrior of the dark you kind of get this and like if they were to be combined into one person, you kind of get this like stoic individual that exudes strength, mm. safety. Right. So I, was, like my projection on that person is that I'd find them very hard to read because I don't know if they're in the light or the dark today. Right. Well, even not even today, like five minutes ago, they were on one side and now they're, you know, they were in the dark and now they're in the light. And so yeah. like, for me, building trust with that, the figure that can enter light and dark like that becomes very, very difficult. Yeah. And, and that is very difficult. It's very, it's like, it's our natural, we have, cause we have these natural ways of responding. So mm. if somebody's in the shadows, then we, we leave. And if somebody's in the light, then, you know, we can, uh, we can also leave. No, wait, what is it? If somebody's in the shadows, Whatever we have, like different tactics for being able to deal with the different things. So the the shadows is you bring a lot of light to the situation. Mm. If somebody's light, then you can move into the shadows. But if they're both in the shadow and the light, like if they're integrated, then um, well, they're gonna make me uncomfortable. (laughs) Right. So your only your only choice is to is to be a good person in a way that other people can see. Mm. That's or to join them in the light and shadow, which is even more complicated. Yeah. Yeah. And to like integrate that yourself so that you can, you can not, you can not reflexively, you don't reflexively respond to one of these sides. You can, you can, you can handle both of them. Mm. And so the, like the, there's like an archetype of like the gunslinger where, cause like, if you think of gunslingers, it's like the good guys tend to like 
okay, I'm going to draw first. You know, like I, I'm fastest. Mm. So like, that's why I'm good. And then the bad guys try to sneak up on me. But then you get this like anti-hero version where the, where the bad guy, where the, where the, it's like a game of who gets the drop on the other. Mm. Um, right. So, so there's the this quality of speed to this archetype. Like who, who's got the, who's their head. So yeah, so the speed is the good. Is the good is like I'm going to stand here and I'm defend it, and I'm going to kill you before you kill me, mm. or I'm going to I'm going I'm going to end this. I'm going to make this in such a way that you can't that I, that we will win. So in with the guns, it's speed because whoever shoot first wins. Mm. But you know, it might be like building a fortress or something, right? Like there's there's very there's other ways of of doing that. But in in the old in the West, that's how that's how you know, like in the Western movies at least, that's how it was. It's like the it's like you're getting the drop on the person and you're fastest. And so if you can get the drop on people, like you understand how that works, like ambushing works and you're quick and accurate and you have a good weapon, mm. then you can, you can't let your guard down, but you can be calm and relaxed. Mm. Like it's all going to plan. Yeah. Like whatever happens, I'm going to be able to deal with it. And I'm already like in, and I'm already, de- it's like, it's whatever's going to happen. I'm going to deal with it. And I'm already dealing with it because I'm already paying attention to the exits. I'm already paying attention to the, to the, uh, to the windows. I'm already looking at the security. I was hanging out with, um, with ex special forces guy. And he, he's like sitting like the, when we're at the restaurant, he's like, Oh, I want this seat. Right. Cause this seat gets him the view of the entrance, but it has like a little bit of cover and, um, you know, whatever. Right, and he's like, at a restaurant. He's on duty. Huh? Security never sleeps. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, which again, like acknowledging like there's there is some problem problematic stuff here, but um but like that's that's the idea is like if you can do this in a in a like a non-PTSD way, if you can do this in a calm way where you're you 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 realize you're in you're in a you're in a like a safe place, but the world itself is not safe. Mm. And but also being activated by that danger is is like bad for your long-term nervous system and so right. you're always like playing this this long game of how do i like keep myself alive for the longest amount of time mm. and usually that's i need to calm the fuck down <laughs> at some point right like i need to right. rest or else i'm not going to make it right every good soldier needs to trust their crew enough to that they can rest yeah or society or yeah or even like everyone like soldiers need to sleep like even if you're in mm. even if you're, you're not a good soldier if you're not sleeping yeah you shoot better when you sleep shoot better when you're alive <laughs> <laughs> and you're alive when you <laughs> and you have sharp senses yeah so this is this is this level is very it's very physically embodied so it's very sharp senses right so the soldiers are using they're using their eyes they're using the ears the nose you know their body like it fatigue you know there is mental fatigue but a lot of it is like the the physical fatigue and the the physical equipment and checking everything and so it's, it's very it's a very like physical need to be ready to be to do anything so you're not like trying to necessarily accomplish long-term goals from that perspective you're trying to stay alive and keep keep your keep your uh, material and, and personnel alive and or destroy the enemy like unalive the other side right and so like that's what it is it's so it's it's kind of this like in the moment i don't want to say like short-sightedness but there is a there is a sense of like like, focus yeah like you're doing the thing here and you're not worrying about the big picture you're Mm. a soldier your job is to do what what your job is and everybody else and you know like let let the other people deal with that i need to keep my men alive even if you're like a leadership a little bit it's i need to keep me alive i need to keep my friends alive and i need to keep our equipment working well so that we can stay alive long term um and and that's that and then when you go up a level so there's a bunch of different levels um which i'm trying to put together um so i'm gonna have i'm gonna have operator there's there's an operator level Mm mm-hmm which is like the next level up. So this is like squad leader thinking about this or like in modern day, it would be like a team leader or project manager um, where you're not, your role is, you're not I'm on like the running, yeah, I'm running into this on like the ground and emerge. 
yeah so so there is this, yeah so there is like um there's a thing like for me to trans like to talk about my transition is we're doing like the podcast and so on. i'm like my job is to talk say good things mm-hmm. let elliot say things you know things like oh, that yeah. and then there's there's this organizational role of actually there's gonna be a lot of people here we need to put stuff together um and so how do we get everybody like working their best so even if i'm like not necessarily able to do my job that well if the team is working at very high efficiency level well together, then the counterfactual is that we are doing well as a unit. And so you've, you're in a way you've moved beyond your immediate physical needs and you're into like a a slightly more abstract way. The scope of attention is broader. Yeah. Yeah. So your attention is broader. So you're not you, you're a bunch of people. Mm. And so there is like a, a way to shit on this and there is a way for them to shit on others. Um, right. If they like take advantage of their foot soldiers and get them to do useless work, that's uh, like I mean, a power trip, but it's not respectful to the parts of themselves that they're meant to be managing. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the way, yeah. So the way this kind of works, works the other way is uh, both ways is you get this, the leadership can be, um, yeah, like the leader could be like, I'm in charge, I'm the boss, and you all have to listen to me. And everybody that's not the boss is worse than the boss. In the mud because I told you to. Yeah, because I told you to, because I'm in charge and it yeah, says this, higher like, rank. It says tyrant boss, leadership. I make more money than you. Yeah. Um, and you could go that way, and that's not good. <laughs> Don't well, do that. It's probably not good for you. It's probably not good for your underlings. It's, it's prob- not good for anyone. Bad for business in general. Yeah. 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 So like the, the military operates are like, I'm in charge. And so you have to listen to me. Um, but like everybody's agreed to that. So that's just how things work. And, and obviously it gets more complicated and there's more nuance in like real life, but you know, like the abstract version of it is <laughs> I'm in charge because I'm in charge because I have a higher rank. Um, but like in our day-to-day life, it's like, who are you, who are you following? So sometimes you're stuck in structures that you don't, you may want to be in or you may not want to be in. But like for let's for the war against you know war against Moloch or the the war for to end suffering, the um like who are you following? Like who do you look around to follow, or who follows you and why do they follow you? Um, so those are the questions I would ask from that position. And so there's this sort of leadership archetype of of like sacrificing yourself. And like, and, but it's like, it's sacrificing a part of yourself, it's sacrificing that physical sense that, that like, I'm not going to have the best gun because I'm not the one that could use it the best. I'm not, right. you know, I'm not going to have the best equipment. I'm not necessarily going to be wherever it is, but the, it's, it's like, it's really caring for the team as, as your unit of operation. Right. And I'm, 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 I'm calling these operators, but they're like team leader slash operator. Cause I think like operating equipment is very similar as well. Um, to respect so, all of the parts of your equipment right so the so like to to use this so this is how i'm going to do it like there's operating people like operating teams and then there's the other side is operating um equipment so uh like anyone who's ever driven a car or used any heavy equipment before or even light equipment um you don't like if i get hit in a car if i'm in a car and i, I get hit i'm not saying oh my car got hit i'm saying i got hit mm. right because there's this mental, like the mental car space. Is me. Yeah. Like I am, I'm not me anymore. When I'm driving a car, I'm not me. I'm, I'm the car. And so right. I'm like, I talk about the car. I'm like, like I got a van now and like my ass is huge <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, like I'm big and it's like hard for me to maneuver and I'm slow, but like technically none of those statements are true. It's the van is all those things. But when I'm driving, I'm the van. And it's like disconcerting when I went back to drive a car because I'm like, oh, now I'm like smaller and I can't see behind me because the van's got a rear view mirror, but the car doesn't, uh, not a rear view mirror, a rear view camera. And so there's, there is this, there is this like shift from like, from I'm not me, I'm the vehicle. Mm-hmm. I'm not me, I'm the team. Mm. And so I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to sort of show these, I I think that's what it is. So when you're seeing like the, the operator, like the the shadow kind of shifts, right? So when, when I'm driving, I don't, I generally, like, I'm not really looking at drivers. I'm looking at vehicles, right? 
so it's almost like there's or like planes are a better example right if i see a plane i'm not like oh there's a guy driving a plane right i'm like oh no there's a plane flying and it's going here and it's going there and like we almost forget that the, there's an actual pilot like there's an actual pilot like there's actually someone driving that thing right um, I think, so the person, when I look at cars, I see the people there. driving as well. In fact, when I'm a pedestrian, when I am walking around, I am looking, I make eye contact with the drivers if I'm crossing the road because that car may be slowing down. Yeah. But if the, car isn't, if the driver is not watching me, I don't trust them. Right. right? If I haven't so, made eye contact with them, like they may so you, have decide to cross the, yeah, that. I and that's 100%. The but you'll notice when you do that, you do that when you're a pedestrian. Right. You don't do not when you're a car. Too much yeah. when you're a driver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you do that a little bit. Like I, you, I do do it sometimes, but like the most of the time, I'm looking at cars. I'm not looking at drivers right. when I'm driving, um, because it's it's a car, it's a car world, mm. right? Like everybody, I know every driver there is trying to keep their their borders, their integrity of their vehicle. So they're trying to not hit anything, and like that's the number one thing that they're going to do is to not hit anything and to like move forward to their destination. It is amazing how we don't, we have so few road accidents in general. It's really, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Dude, driving is insane. Yeah. I don't know how, Terrifying. Like, I don't know how we as a society just said, you know what I need? I need a half a ton of metal that I can like accidentally slip my foot on and suddenly yeah. like running faster than a cheetah. Yeah. <laughs> if you went back 200 years and said this, like people would think like you would, be nuts <laughs> yeah, if you wouldn't figure it's like you'd actually be nuts <laughs> like if you came up with this idea 10 years ago um it's crazy but i mean so and yeah, like, i really wanted that ai stuff because i hate driving but mm-hmm. that is what's like that is what's happening so like you know with airplanes we forget for, sorry just one thing you want to say okay so like with airplanes we, so in a way like it's interesting because the like the like the person themselves starts to become the shadow or so like, or like the physical, like, like, like your person, your personalness starts to become um, mm. your sense of self. I would say is better way of saying it. Like your, your individual starts to become the shadow, right? Your individuality, your, your individual. Yeah. Yeah. So like with like parenting is a big example where like everything becomes about the kids um, or even like a team, like team, right? Like every you sacrifice for the team. But if you yourself start to lose and like lose yourself, then you're not able to operate properly. And then the team is going to fail because their leader is going to fail. Mm. Uh, parents like kids That's don't do like, well when their parents don't do well. Very complicated because you got to have like a strong enough sense of self that you can let go of yourself in a healthy way that you're in yeah. charge of the family or in charge of the team. And that yeah. like they're the ones on the field, but, but you're the one like coaching, them, right? Yeah. Yeah. So any any bi- and and then any biases you have or any ignorance that you have that you're unable to oh, yeah. um to to confront or to deal with that's that gets reflected back into the team and that gets spread right. out there. I mean this is what I say about corporate hierarchies that whoever's at the top their culture that they impose on their managers and their culture that they impose on the next layer by the time we get all the way down to the the customers the customers are taking the like the beating of of the people at the top of the pyramid, like that's been yeah. translated through multiple levels of humanity. The the customers are receiving the butt end of that. Right. They're receiving the people that understand it the least. Right. 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 So that's so they're that, like they're interacting like let's say the foot soldiers or the the you know like the like the day workers. Um and the day workers are like they don't they don't care about like they don't no longer care about the big picture. They're just doing whatever whatever it is that the system and the people and their boss says to do. Right. Um, and which is, yeah, it's like, it winds up being an end reflection. So the person is the person themselves starts to become shadows. And mm-hmm. so this is, this is like, this is interesting, like, or, or not, or they become in light. They become, you know, like you know, I'm the, I'm the leader. So I'm the first one into the breach, you know, I'm the first one into the office every morning, the last one to leave, or I'm the first one to, to, uh, you know to take a hit right so like business owners stuff like that is like their profits and losses so if there's a loss then the business owner is the one taking the loss not the, the all the employees still get their paycheck but the the owners are the ones to suffer mm. and so there's this like they're they're like kind of like like themselves and personal lives is 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 already shadow like it's not part of it because they're they're there they're playing this role they're playing this archetype 
Um, and so that's that's important. And yeah. Um, that's important. Yeah, so that's important. They're part of the fight and we can mm-hmm. respect each other. Right. That's that level. Um, I got another one which is sort of still on the same level, I think, but it's it's um it's very different. So we have uh we have crafter. So there's if you think of of the guy with the gun, right? So that gun had to like be made. Like somebody made that gun, right? And somebody invented it and made it and manufactured it. And someone also had to repair it, had to replace the parts. Yeah. And so though those those guys are are very, and I'm saying guys because we're doing masculine archetypes. <laughs> so I'm allowed to use gendered language. Um those guys are very they're, they're pivotal. They're required. Yeah. They're they're very essential, but like they almost like you could you could almost you could know you could almost like but you don't yeah. need to know that they exist even right well so this is like done the, their job well you don't know they exist because the, the thing just works it's when right when it breaks that you're like ah my car's not working i need to take it to oh yeah that's right there exist mechanics most of the time you don't want to think about there being mechanics you just want it to work right Right. And there's not even like, even not necessarily you're talking to the mechanic, you're like bringing it to the mechanic shop and the guy there is like, oh yeah, we'll take care of you and all that. And you're like, wow, this guy's so friendly. He does so much stuff. He fixes everything. And there's like some guy in the back with like grease all over his hands. Um, yeah. Who's the one actually fixing your car? That guy in the back, he hates people. He He's just like, he just wants to work on cars, on parts. So that's and that. Your like, car comes in, archetype. car goes out fixed. He doesn't want to talk to anyone. Right. So you, that's the archetype. You're playing very into that archetype where, the, well, the guy in back who deals with stuff, he's probably autistic and doesn't want to talk to people. <laughs> um, right, also, we need him. We need that guy to be. And also, he's a central part of the team, but like we're not going to invite him to parties because we don't like because <laughs> he's not a people person. Because he doesn't want to be at the parties. He wants to be in the workshop. He wants to be with the book. Right. right. So that's that's the thing that I want to play into is 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 no, like everything you said is wrong that guy is 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 a guy and he's playing this archetype and like yeah maybe his job is this um artificer artificer i think i believe the the term is master craftsman artificial huh Ma- the master craftsman yeah yeah so there's an artificer, I believe is the word. So it's, it's the guy that creates the things. So like the airplane was created, the guns were created, the, the spy satellites, all everything was everything that you use is created. So you have a, a team, right? Like even if uh, like you guys are making a product, you have software that you're using, you have whatever it is, like all the tools. Right. There's an architect for a software. Project. Yeah. There's an architect. There's a program. Yeah. There's always, there's always somebody who they're invisible but their work is not mm. right there's and a so, phrase um you eat your own dog's breakfast which is a phrase invented by the likes of like the inside of google because you eat your own dog food you eat your own breakfast. dog food yeah yeah yeah, yeah that's because the startup uh, model. you have to make the software that the rest of your company will be using to do the innovative thing that they're doing in the yeah. outside world and so if you yeah. make if you've got bad code then your bad code affects your bad code. You have to suffer so like, with it. Yeah. 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 So you got to get that right. And you got to do really well with getting that right. You know, to have really good code so everyone else can do their job really well. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's a way that's, that's, I'm really glad you brought it up. That's a way, that's a way of like, um, this is like the other side. I hadn't even thought of this, but there's the shadow side here of, of like someone creates it and then they send it out. Um, and so like that, there's almost a shadow there where it's like, well, I'm the expert. So I, whatever I say is true and everyone else says isn't true. It is like, whatever, you guys don't know what you're talking about. And so it can create a shadow there. But if you have to sit and eat your own dog food, like if you make dog food and you're like, oh, whatever, it's just dogs. But if you have to eat your own dog food every day, you're going, you're going to get that feedback good. loop. You're going to, <laughs> you're going to make it good. Like you're going to do, you're going to actually try to do a good job. Right. Um, and so there's that there's that shadow side there. So there's like the two shadow sides of 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 the connection. There's like the connection, the disconnect between the producer and the consumer. And those need to be those need to be connected all the time. Mm. Um, and they need to have feedback loops, even though they're not the same thing. And that that's what makes it harder. Like this this is like like we're talking about like team leader as uh, complexity problems. This is this is like another level of complexity problems because 
it's like disconnected. But there there are ways, right? Like guns you can test fire and then give to soldiers and stuff. Um, well, I also see I see a real puzzle because I would like to make the job of the foot soldier easier, right? Don't ask how it works. It just works. Be it the like the gun or the bomb or the car. Trust me, it works. And that soldier needs to get in the car and drive it to where he needs to go. At the same right. time, I need to turn to the crafter and be like, make it work and make sure my dumbass foot soldier knows how to use it and can like work out how to use it as easy as possible. Right. right? And right. make sure it's fixable when he screws it up and brings it back and needs fixing. Right. That's yeah. the, like this is the yeah, challenge so- that like it needs to be infallible to really dumb humans <laughs> yeah and like he needs to make himself disappear right like that's his job is right. to make himself like gone from the team essentially mm-hmm. and like that's hard like that's a hard thing that needs to be dealt with right uh, i want to you remind me of a story of uh, the guy who did the sound engineering on the lightsabers for the original star wars so there's a really cool interview with him um where he talks about like doing the sound for the lightsaber and so he, you know, what does a lightsaber sound like? Like uh, nobody knows, right? Like the lightsabers didn't exist before then. So he had to like figure something out and make, make it up. So he did it. And then at the end, like the movie shows and like nobody gives him any compliments. Right. Like, nobody says you did good, you did bad. Like they just ignore him. And then he was like, oh, did you do a good job? Is it like so bad? And then he said, he realized like people didn't compliment him because they thought that's what the sound the lightsaber made. Right. So they didn't know that he had a job. <laughs> I, I kid you not. I met a audio engineer two weeks ago and he was talking about putting on concerts in holes that have like an echo in holes that have reverb in holes that have like you, you throw too many people in that hole and the sound bounces differently. And he was talking about like, like the, the producer came out to him and said, wow, we usually get a lot of complaints, but we didn't get any. And that's his like, oh yeah. If they're not <laughs> complaining, they just think that's what the singer sounds like, right? Yeah. But yeah. but like 500 people all think that's what the singer sounds like, right? right? Which right. is a really, really hard thing to do. Like you think you're in the singer's living room when they're singing out a song, when you're in a hall of like hundreds of people. Right. That's like <laughs> impressive work. That's like the, the invisible craftsman for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that that really does like capture it. It's like, like the craftsman that does the best job, their compliment is nobody knows they exist. Right. Everybody, nobody, and not even they don't know they exist. Everybody thinks that they shouldn't. Like, everybody's like, what do you even do? Like, you don't, you're not needed <laughs> is, is like the highest uh, compliment. There's a have. like, there's a link here. I'm, I'm going to like, let's try this. The universe without a creator. Uh because we like through a certain lens, through the a way of looking, we live in a perfect universe already. And at the same time, there's this like godly creator behind our universe, right? There's like something that we wanna we wanna believe there's someone pulling the strings as well. Anyway, this archetype goes like can go and go and go. Right. So you get this back and forth of like, mm. well, if we see a watch, then you know the watchmaker exists. Right. And so you're like, there's a natural yearning to look at the world and to see where it came from what created it and that it's that i mean like like as far as like it's also like the creator is pretty big right the the creator Mm -hmm. is playing god the creator is saying this is how it should look this is how it should be yeah like carve it out of yeah there's like this perfect perfect uh, perfect experience of like the world where people don't even know that it's ambiguous whether or not they exist Mm. um yeah interesting like playing into like God and stuff. This one's got a little bit more in it. That, that's like, oh, uh, it'll keep going. Yeah. Keep about it. This is like, this area is where I like started to run out of, um, run out of steam. Like the first stuff I had it really well. And then I knew I wanted to come in this direction with the, like being removed from it, but being essential to it and still participating. Um, so it's really good. You brought that. I got one, I got one more and then like a bonus class. Yeah. So I have um I have the con- I have the two again which are like light light and shadow um li- the logician and the politician so um there's a saying what is it um um amateurs talk tactics ex- experts talk logistics cuz in like logistics is what wins wars 
Right. Um, so the army that can go to where they need to be with the equipment and the food and the personnel that they need to have is is going to beat the army that even if they're stronger or better or whatever, but if they don't have food, they're not winning. <laughs> right. They don't have supply yeah. lines, they're not winning. <laughs> I, I've heard this historically as well. If you go back to the wars with knights on horseback, and you went to war with 10,000 soldiers at, on like a very, very hot day. And they went, the, your enemy went to war facing you with 10,000 soldiers. If you could deliver war, water to your troops, there's just died of heat stroke. <laughs> He's just like, yeah. yours, yours is still standing because they, they got a drink of water and there's died of heat stroke. So like, yeah, yeah logistics wins. Yeah. So logistics are, are, is like the secret army <laughs> inside the army. Mm -hmm. So they're like the ones and like, again, I'm like playing into this archetype of it, but like, they're the ones that are, are like actually fighting the war and everybody else is just doing like, they're just idealists, like doing their ideology and the logistics are the ones that are like, okay, we're going to actually win this war. Right. <laughs> um, you know, which is like on this, like, like higher strategic level. Right. We need the fuel. We need the soldiers. We need the, the weaponry. We need it all in the right place at the right time. Yeah. Yeah. I think this might actually be playing into, um, this might almost be like a female archetype a little bit. Because now that I think about it. Well, there's, like there's, the mother there's a masculine sure provider as well. Are, are fed. Huh? Yeah. The masculine has a provider in it as well. But yeah. Yeah. I, I'm thinking I'm taking this from like a masculine perspective of like logistics of they're seeing how things are running and they're saying hey we need to run this differently or this mm -hmm. thing needs to go there that thing needs to go there um you know the warriors in front lines like they're going to run out of arrows and we need those arrows to show up bullets whatever to show up when they like before they need it mm -hmm. and so like all the other people um even the the the, the crafters etc they got like oh the crafters they need um not some need the raw right. materials to make the, the tools that they can right. get to the front lines or they need they need like an intermediate product that that needs to be that like we need to like i can't make but somebody else can make it and so um this is um right so like i need to go set that up so uh like this is the archetype that i feel like i'm living often um and this is like systems thinking levels so you're looking at systems and you're looking at the health of the system and the robustness and how does the system work um, on that angle and you're trying to make it work well. Right. Um, there is a, there is like an- we're also, hmm? we're also trying to make things that haven't been made before a lot of the time. Like we want to make um, new, new tools. Otherwise, you know, the other army equally has the tools that we have. We've got to make new ones, make new novel, new technology. Right. So you- stuff. So we that's need one of the, planning new resources for new new ideas, right? So that that's part of that's part of the army. So you need to like balance like innovation versus um, you know practical on the ground, like what's happening right now versus uh, you know supplies and like you know there is always a limited amount of resources within the system um, and limited amount of of maneuverability you can do. But I would say like innovation is the artificer's job, like it's the the crafter. So like the, the logician is not the one inventing a new plane. The no, he's just getting the resources to the, the guy. He's getting the resources plane. to them or getting the information that there needs to be an, a new innovation to the right. people. Or the planes or are coming back with bullet holes. You can actually work on it. Hmm? Right. The planes are coming back with bullet holes and we're learning things about Right, right, like that. that th yeah. Well, no, that's, that, that's like scientists. I would call that more crafter. Right. But the logician no, or, is the one that's or saying, information. Hey, this is actually a different class, right? Yeah. The, the logician is like, hey, we need to look at this. Like, send it to the, the crafter. We'll sort this out. The legit, yeah. The logician is usually the one that's going to notice that there's a problem here. So, um, so like, they're going to see like all, all this stuff. And then the airplane people are going to have like their ideas. The logician is going to be like, actually, this problem is not solved by um, airplane expert. This problem is solved by math people. So, we need right. to get a math person in there to, to figure out this statistics and how that works because like originally i believe it was like the the people that were looking at it were wanting to put the armor on where, where, the bullet the bullet holes are. where right. they're like oh we see all the planes we see where they get shot shot let's put the armor on that and then it's it takes a statistician statistician to be like your to see to say 
it, it's not like even the statistics, right? It's it's saying what is the question, right? The, the, so like he's saying, the problem set is not the planes that you see. It's it's the planes you send out because right. those are the ones you're trying to protect. And so the ones that you, and he's saying, and then the statistics are, well, there's probably an even distribution of where the plane's getting shot. Therefore, this and like once he shows you the logic it's very it's very easy to understand mm, right but it's that but, that logistics from the that's got the view you need that like in, in innovator like that the inventor that like thinker mm. um uh, to to come up with it and i would say thinker is a different class as well mm. um versus logician like logician is like there is right and wrongs like thinking is much is much more open-ended now I, i'm going to put that later I think I think there's a shaman class that I'm sort of calling. I'm gonna put thinker in there as well. Mm. This is good. I'm glad we're talking about the slashing it out because I didn't have everything uh, set up at the beginning. Yeah, but I felt the I felt the the truth of it and the momentum. I felt like we could we could bring it out together. I'm glad. Um, yeah, and then so the other side you have, um, so this is like I guess the shadow or the the not shadow depending on how you want to look at it, right? Where the logician is is invisible in, in a lot of ways where they don't actually like do anything mm. but if they weren't there if things wouldn't work <laughs> things right. wouldn't happen well they'd work uh, they'd work in a useless clockwork way like overspending and uh soldiers doing things they don't need to do yeah yeah no one's questioning i, 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 I joke because i joke because like if you look at the system like which part of the system are they doing like they're not they're they're the ones doing the system <laughs> so it's it's hard to it's it's sort of hard to conceptualize a lot, a lot of ways. Mm. Um, the yeah so and then the other side of that is so they're there like they're they're not deciding what the system should do. They're just they're sorry they are deciding what the system should do, but they're not deciding what like the aims of the system is. So the logicians aren't deciding who if they should go to war or if they should like try to talk peace or or like sort of generally attack, generally not attack. Um, they're, they're there to make that, to make what's happening more efficient and right. more effective. The politicians are the ones that are deciding, should we go to war or not? Right. So you got the so difference both, the politics hmm? above that. Yeah. Politics are above that. Like they're more, they're right. more conceptual. So the, like, uh, let's say like Russia, right? Like, so like Russia, U Ukraine. So, there's there's a whole like pre-war to before that right so um russia was doing a lot of um uh what do they call it uh like training exercises near ukraine uh for like a year or two before i believe right there for a long time before and there was like I mean, there was like intelligence on it so those are logicians like practicing for the war but they're not deciding to go to war the politicians which in this case would be likely putin and uh, whoever else the the wagner guy maybe i don't know i don't really know how the po russian politics system works but um let's say it's like putin on their side um is 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 the one who's like okay now we're gonna go invade and so they're the ones that are deciding what is the army doing um what is the purpose is what is our system's intent how are we playing this in like this larger scale and so you have like the american side right so you have um like when Trump was in was in office, he was like very mad dogs of war, right? Like he's like, yeah, Putin, try it. We'll see what happens, right? Like, <laughs> like let's go. <laughs> and then Biden is very like, oh, don't worry, we're not gonna, uh, not don't worry, but like we're not gonna do anything if if Russia invades, we're not going to war. Um, and so there's there's um, there is these like it, it's like different. It's like it's like the system speaking for what it's going to do. Or what it what it intends to do, or what it is, and so those are the politicians types. And so there's a very obviously like politicians cast a very large shadow, um, in the sense that they're not actually the system, right? Like people like to think of this, and this is something I think really needs to de be decoupled for the meta modern society. People think, oh, the leaders of our world today, and then they look at politicians. Politicians are not the leader of the world; they're the they're the leaders of the government. The government is part of the world and it's a big part and it's an important part. Um, but it's it's not the world, right? Like the government can say whatever they want and you could still do what you want. You might you have to be careful because they are big and strong <laughs> and not always nice, but they are 
there are like they're, they're they're politicians like they come and go and they 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 say things that are not always true and they don't necessarily speak for the system all the time they they often just sort of say whatever they think they should say and to a certain extent like that is actually correct thing to do where they're just saying whatever their constituents want that means they're just speaking they're just the voice of the people which in our democracy is is actually like kind of the thing that they're supposed to do so <laughs> there's a lot of stuff here it's very complicated and hard to hard for me to like parse out like exactly what's good and what isn't and also i'm a little nervous because like politicians have been shutting shutting youtube channels down so i don't want to like pick fights um but there is there is they do definitely do cast shadows because there are there are things that they they often say things that because they said them it's things are different um not just uh not just like saying it as like information or to or to 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 do things i also think it's very hard to be a politician today there is just so much that they need to be on top of that they need to be understanding the systems and how they work and then if a politician is like you know what we need we need to throw more money towards healthcare and say like not even international warfare just like in our country we need to throw more money at the hospitals right the chances are that, that money goes to something stupid or useless is so high because they have poorly allocated where it goes that it may not get to the people who need it right the insurance companies might take a cut and the hospitals themselves might build new wings and then just charge people more money because they you know okay. like it doesn't make it to the final like to help people with their healthcare costs yeah right? the politician yeah. in all of their meaning well they need to be on top of everything to make sure that when they make a command that it carries down to the the like final impact yeah yeah i think this is this is like you really nailed the distinction between politicians and logicians yeah. so like the logicians you give them the resources you know the resources are going are going to go right. to where it needs you give the resources a politician like you don't know what they're doing because their job is done right as soon as you give them the resources they're done their job right they don't need to, to do anything anymore um but they're steering the ship you know yeah everyone else is kind of like taking the the instructions about where the ship is going they're the ones who know where the ship is going yeah, they're the ones that are saying where the ship is going. They, they whether they, they're not even necessarily the ones that are knowing. Like the, the navigators are are the ones that know where where they're right. Going. And the politician might like take the instructions from that navigate information from the navigator and say yes. Like, yeah. So th there needs to be like a very strong pairing of politicians and and logicians. I think for in order for things to go well. Mm. Um. Uh, I was gonna say a thing, but I forgot what it was. There's there it's funny in, in Toronto, um, there's uh Humber River uh hospital you, you previously known as Humber River Hospital. They spent like I think like two million dollars on changing it to Humber River Health and to try to change the image of the hospital. Right. Um, which the people working there were very displeased because <laughs> they're like, oh, we yeah. need a bunch of things. We need we need it like these things, and you're spending this money on advertising. Let me tell you, there was um in Sydney here. There was a company, a government organization that used to be known as City Rail. And then like oh, probably about four or five years ago, the memes and the popular culture started naming it Shitty Rail. Yeah. <laughs> Shitty Fail. And that is when they renamed, and I'm sure they spent an amount more than necessary to rebrand themselves as Sydney Trains. <laughs> Just because they wanted to get away from being shitty rail. Right. And like, that's a very politician move, right? It's a politician right. is like, oh, I need to have people on my side. And this is how I get people on my side. Right. Right. But the logician would never do that. Logician would be like, uh, like, fix the train. We need to fix it because, like, here are all the problems <laughs> and here's how to solve them. And this is what we're going to do to like fix it. And then, you know, who cares if people insult us because we'll have an awesome train rail. Mm. Um, which I, you could tell, I definitely, uh, I'm definitely coming from the logician side, but I am starting yeah. to respect the political side. And, I feel so. myself a little out of touch with the politicians. Yeah. So, like, it's hard, easy for me to sit back and be like, they don't do the thing that they're supposed to do, but I personally feel out of touch with what they're doing. So, it's hard for me yeah. to relate and to respect them because I'm so far away. But I'm sure yeah. they're trying pretty damn hard. Like, I have known over time a few people in politics. And they are working so hard. They're like 10 hour days or more. They're reading 
like thousands and thousands of pages of like law level of reading. I don't know if you've ever heard a, a person talking about being a law student, they're like, they get an assignment on Monday that's due on Friday and there's a thousand pages of reading. And like, you need to like, that's just how it is. You just need to learn the skill of reading a thousand pages before the end of the week. And then also writing your essay on it. Right. Yeah. That's like, politician. read. <laughs> That's like that's politicians are trying to keep up with legislative changes. They're talking hundreds and thousands of pages. Like you need yeah. to know how to read it all, and then you need to know how to apply a special specialist lens on what's actually changing. Right. So, so this is this is interesting because, like, I'm going to split this here. Hmm. Um, that is what people think. Uh, you know, like Congress people or whatever should Parliament people should do. Right. Uh, I believe Rand Paul does this. So he. He's like the only the only U.S. Uh, senator, I believe they're they're called or congressman. I can't remember what he is. I think he's congressman. Um, that actually like reads all the laws being put forward. And I used to admire that. I used to be like, oh yeah, this guy's awesome. And then as I got older and thought about it more, I realized that's not their job. Right. Their job is not to read the laws that they pass. Their job is to have a team of advisors who have done all that work for them and can give them the information, especially if the body of law is too big. I, I don't know exactly. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like, I don't know exactly what their job is, but like, if he's the only one doing it, then uh, like, good for him, you know, like for sure for him, I'd rather have like him, like come to Canada and become prime minister, please. But <laughs> the, the, um, like, like there's something missing here. There's some sort of like political, like it's like a lot of political maneuvering and things like that. And that doesn't, that doesn't take place within like the actual power. There's like something that's representative of these people. Right. Um, and I think that's the job that they're doing. And I'm not sure they're necessarily doing like this. Let's say the well, system well, is not also, necessarily doing a great job. I, I see it as potentially needlessly imposing, especially given our society gets more and more complicated. Once upon a time, maybe your job as a politician would have been to have read all the laws and to know what they are. But as the right. steering the ship, your job is to say, okay, the ship is turning left now and trust your legal department and your other departments to like tell you, actually you turn the wheel to the right guy. <laughs> you need to like, it's the other way. There's the left one in order to like yeah. cause the effect in the world. Right. You need to, but you need to have a trusted team next to you who you can rely on to deliver the results that you want. Right. So it's, you're saying it's like become more, it's like in almost like less artificer, more uh, like team, team lead. Right. Um, well, in that just because we're, scope. we're coping with such complexity. That larger scope. Right. And the more, the more we like scale up our society, like we're, we're at one day, we're going to have one global government probably in charge of, it doesn't matter where you, you are. We're going to have sort of a unified country system, a unified education system a unified health system why not like we're all humans we're different humans we're, we're probably um, uh, i don't know eventually i mean, we'll come I mean eventually yeah i'm talking like a couple hundred years from now like why no, would much longer than different? that i mean to a certain extent we already have like uh, i mean it's complicated <laughs> well, we, we can like purchase any i can purchase anything from anywhere in the world and get it sent to me right and that's not organized by any of the governments that's organized by a logistics right chain. That is like, right, oh, I can just, as a consumer, I can have access to a whole bunch of stuff, right? As long as I have the money, the, the finance to pay for it, I can get the final object. That's like, and also on that level, the consumer anywhere in the world, as long as there's a postage. Oh, so like, why shouldn't that be true for education? Why shouldn't that be true for education? Why shouldn't that yeah. be true? Okay, okay, why shouldn't that be true for like all of these other services and systems that like, obviously we had to grow up in this way, like local government first, because we didn't have the like, global interconnectedness until recently but there's no reason why we can't like like my state government is duplicate everything that my state government does is duplicated the next state over and the next state over again right why are we duplicating these well partly because we it's hard to manage humans at scale but also partly because we needed to do it at smaller scales because we were only small scale back then and now we're stuck with a system that has these like clunky shaped land masses and like weird voting systems in order to convince people to like not care about what the government is. Doing. Okay. This is a rant about the government now. I'm going to start. Yeah. yeah. This, <laughs> this is, this is much more complicated, but I, I, cause I think you're, you're, there's, there's a lot of stuff going on here. Um, but you're, what you're trying to do is like, you're trying to look at the system and you're trying to like logistic right. it. 
and you're someone's gonna, say, gonna like, hey, be, like, be more efficient hearing the thing. That's why. Um, um, well, so that's the thing, right? Like, this is your this is your proposal as as a logician is like this is what we should do. Right. And so, if you wanted to make that happen, you you'd have to almost move into the political realm of okay, now we need to gather allies to make this happen. Like, how do I get a one world government? So I'm gonna go grab allies from you know Davos, and I'm gonna grab king charles and you know like you know pull it together so that we can have this like one world order where we where we impose the the truth on everyone right uh, uh i don't know about that 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 bit but <laughs> you can see, we, uh, see i'm not we it. try and work together like a lot of um governmental jurisdiction well like my country's government is working against some of the other countries' governments because we still feel like we're competing against them for like we have the better health care we're going to like keep it for us and not share it with you. Well, fair enough in terms of like, I don't want to take care of other countries' health, but we might as well give them the innovation that they can take care of themselves. Anyway, that's well, I, I don't think countries tend to hide their, the way their systems work from other countries. I mean, maybe they do. Maybe they're like, oh, we figured out like uh, how to do the surgery and we're not telling anyone. <laughs> or like, oh, and then we, we can get how to make our hospitals efficient and we're just going to like not tell anyone that's not in our country. All right. Back to the job of the politician. The job of the politician. Yes. Yeah, so the they, like, politician is less steering. Make that dream happen. Yeah. Yeah. So the logician is the one who's like, okay, like this is what needs to be done. This is how we're going to do it. And the politicians, the other side of that is like, okay, like this vision makes sense and I'm going to grab allies. Um, to make this happen. And I think that's the right way for the the position to be. I think all too often you have um, politicians who are like, I'm going to amass power for myself. And now that I have power, logicians go to them and be like, I'm going to try to implement this. Right. Um, which I think is a bit of a mistake in a lot of ways because the, it like almost like, um, it's like, I guess, push versus pull. So like, like, do the resources dictate what where the need is, or does the need dictate where the resources should go? And and you want the need to dictate where the resources should go, right? But you need to do that in a way that doesn't have the system just advocating for for needs. Like, it needs to be there needs right. to be some way of translating um, the needs across each other, because right. so the an example that I know of is like if you're running a hospital, resources, if right? you're running a hospital. You need to decide whether to buy a new X-ray machine or buy other hire, hospital support. Hire a, a new psychologist, yeah. Right, or and like X-ray machines, like half half a million dollars easily. Right, and, and a psychologist, psychologist could be, be, you know, two hundred fifty thousand a year. Yeah, so like well, they, they don't get paid that much at hospital. Hospital people get paid a lot less. Okay, but whatever. But but it probably like, almost is if I've much. only got a, a set budget, a set amount of money. I need to decide which health causes are more important than others. Like yeah. there is in fact a translation between different qualities of life outcomes. Yeah. Like if someone's already 98, I'm not going to be replacing their hip necessarily, right? Because they're already unlikely to make use. If someone's 75 and I replace that hip and they use it for 50 years, that's yeah, or whatever. Yeah, whatever it is. There are like, this is, this is very EA, right? Like effective altruism. Right. But right. even within a single hospital, like, yeah. There's a, there's someone who needs to be making those calls about what's more worth it. Yeah, there needs to be someone that's looking at hard, cold, hard calculations yeah. and, and making decisions. Um, and like you had this in the war, there was this movie uh, with Turing, uh, around Alan Turing, I forgot what it was called. It was like called Turing or something. Um, and and like they made this decision to they had they cracked the Enigma code and then they made a decision Enigma. to like the, the imitation the, game. I think. Yeah, the imitation game. So the they had the they, they let this ship sink. And I guess it's real life. I don't know why I said movie, but they, they let this uh they let the ship sink so that the even though they knew that it was going to be attacked, so that the Germans wouldn't find out that they cracked the code because that information was worth more than that ship. Right. right. Someone's making that decision and that person is not necessarily well liked, but they're very important, vital to the rules. To, to 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 success and and to keeping casualties down and to, and to all these things. Well, the other puzzle of needs based resource allocation is that if information if that information gets out that we're allocating resource by needs, a bunch of people are going to shout louder. My need is more important, right? So that they can get more resources, right? There's, right. there's going to so be some genuine people who are like, I really need some resource here. Can I have some? And then there's going to yeah. be some other people that is like. 
that's how you get resource by screaming about it. I'm going to scream even loud. As right. we know, like, like I could use a new car. My Bugatti is pink and I need, it's, I need a red one now. <laughs> right. As we, as we know from casualty situations, Andrew <laughs> <laughs> screaming casualty actually doesn't need help because they're still alive and breathing it's the one who's not screaming that is about to drop dead that you need to like absolutely rush over there with the well, not necessarily because you got triage and all that stuff yeah, but yeah. yeah but this is like the triage yeah, yeah. process needs to work out really quick yeah where the resources need to go yeah and and this is this is one of the big coordination problems of our of our era i think this is like like you get like the communists which hate which are like everyone according to each according to the and everyone according to their need each according to their ability and everyone according to their need or something. Yeah. So like they want they want the world where everybody's producing the the max that they can and they're getting all the stuff that they need. And like the vision of that I think is is hundred percent spot on. Like this is the world yeah. that we want. Beautiful. Uh, but also like the coordination problem is incredibly hard and you can't just say that's what you're gonna do and then grab all the resources because that's not gonna work out well. Well, you might end up with the minimum. That everyone produces the minimum that they can. Right. So then it just winds like you wind up just you wind up just like pushing off the problem somewhere else to and then nobody can talk about it. And capitalism, right. like the, let's say the extreme version of capitalism is is like, okay, whoever gets the resources gets to allocate it. And um, you know, that produces a bunch of abundance of resources, but it doesn't necessarily dictate where the resources should go the best. Um and so, like, I definitely come on on the capitalism. Uh, I mean, actually, I don't come on. The, I used to come on the capitalism side. Well, I come in the like. There's an integrated view of this that is the way to be. I also know um, I grow up like, in really capitalism. hard. <laughs> like, like, I know that my society is built on a capitalistic worldview. Like, that's okay. We also have to like, if we want a better one, we're going to have to work with capitalism to get there. Right. You kind of want to work work with capitalism and work with this vision because, like, the vision is like like this is the right vision. It's just it's the it's like the implementation is is like much harder than people think it is um like this is the hard the hard problem of society <laughs> i named <Right>. it here <laughs> archetypes let's get back to our archetypes i think right so that's why i want to kind of clear up this the, clear this whole space i feel like we got everything and now there's like one more level i want to bring in oh okay so that is that is the shaman level mm. um and I want to, I want to like start to do this. So this is, this I would count as, and this is something that like we're figuring out together, but this is, I would count as, um, I think like information. So intelligence, sorry. So intelligence people. So those that decide what is true is essentially intelligence. Those that decide what is almost in a way, um, or decide what, what people think is true. Um, and then you have thinkers, which are, uh people that like they they the thinkers like uh, like thinkers ideas you know like good writers of like this they they tell you they tell you how to think like how your mind should work so yeah. like good writers and philosophers are very like this and then the third type is like the creative so they they teach you how to solve problems and so you have these three like the intelligence like what what is going on how to process it and then how to solve it, which is essentially create. It's like creativity is like that moment of, of, of creating, of, of new knowledge being of new wisdom being, being emerged forth. And then once you're like, okay, like this, is how we're going to do it, this, is how it is. And then you can pass it on to logicians, politicians, and down the, down the, down the train. Um, and I'm doing in terms of hierarchy because it's it's levels of abstraction. It's not levels of importance. No, no, um, no, no. I I really think the, the there's there is levels of importance, but that's that's a different system. All these people, um, in abstract, are equally as important as each other. Well, like imagine all of these levels except without the foot soldier. <laughs> like, uh oh, right. Got a real problem. Right. I think I think there is a different way to decide who's more important at any given time. Um, okay. but that's not what we're doing right now. Well, it's also, it's important, whichever one I am in is the most important one for this moment. I said, we're not doing that now, but fine. Okay. Right? Present moment. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Shaman, <laughs> for teaching me how to think about this and then how to, how to live in right. a way. So again, creatively come up with what's important and yeah. providing the information. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> right. So that's why like thinkers think they're the most important because they're, they're, they're the ones thinking and, and foot yeah. soldiers act like they're the most important because they're the ones acting and 
Um, Magicians you know. know they're the most important. Craftsmen know they're the most important. Each of them knows they're the most yeah. important. Yeah, each of them knows because like when they really understand, they really do what they do. Each of their thing is a crux in the system. Right. It's like a, it's like a, um, there's this, uh, it's like the firing pin. I don't know if you've ever seen a gun, take apart a gun. When I was Israel. I got to take apart guns because I hung out with soldiers and the firing pin is like this, like little teeny pin. It's like, it's like nothing, but you right. lose it. That's the thing that the hits the back work. of the bullet, right? <laughs> huh? That's the thing that hits the back of the bullet. Yeah, it's the thing that hits the back of the bullet, and it's it's really small. You gotta be really careful. That was the thing. Like when they're like when I'm taking apart the guns, they're like, "Don't lose the firing pin, or else my like supervisor's gonna lose, like <laughs> beat my ass." <laughs> like it's really bad if you lose it. Allegedly, I don't know why they just don't make extras. It, it feels like this is a solved problem, but um, whatever it is. Well, I'd it, say it's probably because you can disable a gun by just taking out the firing pin for transit or for you know whatever reason that you need to like. Disable a gun temporarily. Yeah, it's a very quick way of back disabling the gun. Like, right? so the the designed it this way. It's also like they probably, if they're hitting the bullet, they're probably a part that can break and need a replacement. It's actually very strong. It's a surprisingly strong uh, piece piece of metal okay. for something very small. Um, yeah. Like I didn't feel like I was going to break it. Right, right. Um, but if it was like, don't sneeze. Pin, huh? Don't sneeze. Yeah, no, it wasn't like that. But it, like it, that size piece of metal is something I would normally feel. Uh, nervous about breaking but the firing pin i didn't yeah. um so yeah so each piece becomes a crux so so you have the you have the shaman classes and so they're they're doing like these these things so like influencers i would i would consider as well um they kind of straddle politicians to a certain extent but they kind of depending on what they're doing is like politician or um or but they could be creator like you know, depending on how they're doing it but like just straight up like influencer in the terms of I'm going to influence people to, to do a certain thing. Mm. Um, this is like, this is especially huge in our day, right? Cause they're, they're right. the internet is, is somewhat new. And so there is this, this like kind of mad rush for control over uh, communications. and, and right, But it's also like, you know, to there's, there's like an unhealthy influencer. Like I'm going to get the high fashion and show off what's the high fashion and, drag people on with me to like copy me in the high fashion. But then there's a really healthy version of like, I'm going to get fit. I'm going to be a good person. I'm going to be a shiny right. light of like other people can follow me and be because I'm like influential in a positive way. Right. Right. So I, I want to like, I, I kind of want to just like reframe that a little bit. Uh, there, there is like fashion influencers that were like, like, Oh, this is the thing that people should wear. Right. And I think that is, probably it's also a usefulness some people don't know how like i'll be honest i'm yeah. not a person who knows how to dress and so if i can like just be like oh that's the look for this season i'll just go with that that's like save me a bunch of time yeah there, like i care like about it less but i can see that you care about it a lot and then i'm gonna look good like that like perfect i'm just gonna come yeah in. yeah and like the makeup tutorials right like not right. that i need to know how to makeup but my wife does um she did the like we, we do for Halloween. I always do like scars, ah. so like I look like a zombie. <laughs> nice. And like she got that, I think, from a makeup tutorial. And so it's like actually like it's actually made my life a lot easier. Right. Yeah. Um, so I'm not. Yeah, and and also I like looking at pretty girls, and they wear makeup, so that. that, that works for me. <laughs> <laughs> um. So like like again like it's not like um it, it's again it's not that it's it's though yeah like so. So if like for us, us being in liminal space, game being meta modern, like us transitioning to the modern meta modern world, and like, you know, to a certain extent, being on that uh, forefront of it, it's um, like the message I want to say is is that is that the power of influencers really lies in the power of the influenced. So, right. Ooh, that this is, is something. A, don't give away the secrets of the equation, Daniel. <laughs> no, I, I I do believe as as a, a, a an influencer myself, uh -huh. I do believe that that this is the correct direction uh, for the future. Um, when people talk decentralized and they talk about you know like meta like empowering democracy, it's the, the power the power of our society. It rests on it doesn't rest on the individual and it doesn't rest on the collective. It rests on people living their lives and being courageous and doing the things that are important to them. And this, like, this is like, this comes back like full circle to the beginning. So 
it, everyone like you're influencing your, your lives like it all it, all of it starts with the warrior it all starts with t- taking that courageous step to try to do what's right mm. and it doesn't matter where you are on this hierarchy or, or in life it it matters that you do this and for the meta modern world to come into existence you need to be able to do this you need to be able to courageously work work for or fight for what is or think about what is right for you for your friends your family and the greater society and that doesn't mean taking stupid risks and that doesn't mean putting yourself martyring or sacrificing yourself that means living it's easy to die for a cause it's much harder to live your life in one Psych. 